Hello, guys. Welcome to another episode of Liverpool Perspective. Sorry, we've been out for a, a while, but I think this is episode. Let me. I think it's episode twenty. So we hit the twenty episode mark, and unfortunately, Dylan wasn't able to come for this episode. But we have a special, special guest from the <laughs> Soccer Universe podcast. Make sure you guys all watch that, of course. With and, <laughs> and, and Yasis is our special guest. Yeah, but make sure you watch the Yasis is there, Archit and Fran. They always. Yes. They're also on YouTube in the in the in the sports universe YouTube channel. So make sure you watch them yeah. as well. But yeah, I mean, ever ever since we last did the podcast with me and Dylan, we a lot of, a lot of stuff happened. We made the top four eventually, and we oh, were third place. God. And uh, yeah, and a, a lot of stuff happened, but. I don't. I think to start off the podcast, I let, it's kind of like, what did you make overall with the top? Yes, is with the whole top four race. I mean, it's kind of madness. See, like, if you for like go back a year, I, I would have expected this top four, right? Liverpool, Chelsea, United City. Like, I would have first seen it. Like, I think that would. I think that was my prediction as well. Um, but if you go back three months, right, instead of a year. You would have never expected Liverpool to make it. Like Leicester have been in the top four longer than any of the other teams in the Premier League since the start of last season. Mm-hmm. Imagine they've been yeah. in the top four for more than two hundred and fifty days, but they have never been in the top four on the last day of the season on either of the last two seasons. Which is just like, I mean, you're gonna be happy because you hate Brendan Rodgers, mm-hmm. uh, but. Oh. It's just crazy, like how how do Leicester always manage to bottle it? Like, and imagine they bottled it against Spurs, the eternal bottlers. Like th- that's how terrible it was. Like, and Chelsea even lost their final game against Aston Villa. Mm-hmm. But Spurs, oh my god! But at least there's a there's a glimmer of hope in the fact that Arsenal didn't make any European competition. Oh well, yeah, that's always good to see. But yeah, I'm, I before. Uh, I think a few a week ago or something. I did. I did look. I remember we had like. A, I mean, for like NYU, we had like a soccer predictions league thing that kind of fell apart really quickly. But we did have predictions, standing predictions, and me. Oh you, yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't you remember. Did get, you, did, you did get the top four. Your top four was Man City, Chelsea, Liverpool, and Manchester United in that order. That so, was that's not bad. That's not bad. And I and I said. I think I said a similar top four. I let me make sure. Uh, Wait a minute. Oh yeah, I said Liverpool, Man City, Chelsea, Man United. So we were, we got we got the top four teams right, as you said. It was it was enough surprising four teams that made it. Yeah, a lot of people predicted that would happen, but the way it happened was pretty insane. It was just. It was it was going back and forth. It looked like West Ham could make top four. It looked like Leicester would make top four. And I, by the way, I did say Leicester would bottle it. Yeah, I did say that throughout the season. Yeah, but Leicester I mean, but, it. It. I don't know. but I didn't. But who knew that Leicester would bottle it like this? They yeah, bottled it just, against. It. They were up two one, up two one oh, against Baller yeah. FC. It looked like um the day where Arsenal get above or above Spurs would happen again. And, Spurs, oh, and Gareth Bale decides to turn up. I mean, Casper, let's, Casper Schmeichel. Did you see that? Guys. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh my God. That. Yeah. But with Liverpool making top four, honestly, I, I think, I, I mean, we said, I said this in previous episodes. I said this to, I was crying this to you. And I said we were not, we were not making top four. Our hope was oh to- my god. Okay, I just looked at my own predictions. Yeah. I predicted Aston Villa to be 18th. I mean, yeah, oh. we all we all did. We all did. We all did. Oh, we really did Aston Villa dirty. Everyone oh did. You're not you're not an exception here. Everyone did. Oh shit. All of us did. Oh my god. I feel bad for that. Only, only oh my god. I mean you you did better than me. I counted, I calculated the points. Like I had I I didn't I did terrible this week. You did like yeah. your ten play like I like and I added like places places off overall, and like the total places off were like was for me seventy two, 
For you, it oh, was. Man. For you, 62. Oh, Which, I'm, that's yours is bad. approximately like three three places off per team. Mine is like 3.5. Yeah, damn. So okay, so that's good. better than me. Yeah, I did. So, that's good. Congrats. But, yes. but yeah, uh, I mean, I didn't expect to make top four after, with that run. We had, I mean, let's go through the run because the, the yeah. whole top four race is interesting. Like, the first thing that it seemed like Leicester surely made top four. Manchester United won, Leicester two. Like, that game was, uh, like, I mean, you you weren't even bothered about that game because... You, yeah, we weren't bothered about any of our last few games, to be honest. Like, yeah. I, I, none I mean, of our teams... Especially this one. You guys played, like, your youngsters in this game. Exactly. The Bulls one, right? We played, like, uh, Elanga. No, Leicester. Like, Leicester. Oh, the Leicester one? Yeah, that as well. We didn't really... We weren't really bothered. Yeah, you guys played your youth and all that, and... And Leicester just beat, beat you. And, and it just looked like Leicester got 66 points. You know, Liverpool needed to win all their games in order to make the top four. Because I, I surely Leicester weren't going to be, we're not going to lose to Spurs. And it, it seemed like we had to win all our, our games. And we had Man United next who rested at that point, who rested all their players. But then we had some optimism heading into that game, which is um the best, which is, a really funny game. Chelsea nil, Arsenal one. I mean, that game, I mean, remember that um uh who scored? Remember that Jorginho pass in that game? I don't. I don't actually. Remember when like when Kepa was out of the goal? Oh, I do. I do. I do. Yes. 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 Yeah. The back pass. Yes, I mean, I do. Chelsea just <laughs> bottled that game, and oh, if, they, if they lost top four, that's where they lost the top four. Oh, yeah, 100%. I mean, 100%. you can't mess up against Arsenal in that way. And then they had so many chances. And you know they never finished their chances. Like, I think Howard's had the breakaway they missed. And it was just uh, a little embarrassing to lose to a team like Arsenal. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, and Chelsea made a lot of errors, as we as we saw. Like, And yeah. I, have, I have a stat that with Chelsea, Chelsea have made eight errors leading top position goals in the Premier League this year season a number surpassed by only Liverpool I mean I'm not surprised because uh we don't have our we don't have defenders we're all we're all over the place this year yeah Chelsea's most in a single campaign league campaign since 15-16 if we recall 15-16 which is also nine as if we recall 15-16 was when Chelsea absolutely were were shocking. They were tenth. The tenth of the tenth of the Premier League, right? Oh, uh, that's how many errors. I mean, to be fair, most of those errors Chelsea made were probably with Frank Lampard with Tuchel kind of. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I think with Tuchel they became far more organized. Like, um, and must I say though, right? Like, I feel like Thomas Tuchel's uh, only kryptonite is Sam Allardyce. Allardyce. Yeah, he beat them five two. <laughs> I mean, everyone's kryptonite always Sam Allardyce, isn't it? Exactly, exactly. Like he beat like, Zidane twice. No, not Zidane. What am I saying? Zidane. He did... Oh, wait, he beat Tuchel beat Zidane twice. Tuchel beat like Pep Guardiola oh, twice. Right. He beat... Tuchel beat everyone, but the only man he couldn't beat was Sam Allardyce. Of course. That basically tells you that Sam Allardyce is the greatest manager of all time. I mean, that's unquestionable, isn't it? It's, it you can't question it. Who, who, so, so Alex, who, so what? Yeah. I mean, that's what. <laughs> I mean, um, that's a hot take right there, you know? No, it's not. It's fact. Undisputed hot, hot take. takes the ones that are controversial. There's no way this is controversial because everyone agrees to it. Yeah. Well, we will talk about Sam Allardyce a little as we go on to this top four insanity. But uh, the, the funny thing, of, like, the staff was actually mentioned a lot leading into the Champions League final. That every time... Like every time Chelsea lose to Arsenal, well, the last time che- Arsenal beat Chelsea at Stamford Bridge was the last time Chelsea won the Champions League. So it did repeat again. It was written in the stars. Even uh, the last time it was um, even that other uh, thing that for the big money signing scored in the semifinals against the Spanish team. Uh, so Torres we- back then and Werner this time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, even uh, they faced a Spanish team in the semis last time. They faced the... Uh, that's true as well. Yeah, that's true as well. They played 
They didn't exactly. play too exactly. much and they played Real Madrid. Yeah, and yeah, exactly. It was mad. It's mad in that sense. Yeah, but yeah, but that but, that game gave me so much confidence. You know, Chelsea lo- lost points. I remember Chelsea beat Man City at that point two one away, and it seemed like Chelsea were secure top four. But suddenly Chelsea bottled it, and we played Man United uh, this game. I mean, I was not confident. I said this in the preview for this game, which was God knows when. I was, you know, I was not confident for that game. And like, when is the last time we beat you guys before this game? I mean, a while back. But the thing is, I I felt like United was gonna lose this game, and if not lose, we weren't gonna win this. Like, um, firstly, like you said, we weren't really bothered about our last few games. Like, there was firstly our players were all tired, and I know it's not an excuse. Like. If, even if it's any game, you go out there with the mentality to win it. But the last month or something, United just hasn't has been off pace. United's players look tired. Play, United's players don't have the same level of I don't know drive, and um, that came back to haunt us in the Europa League final as well. Mm-hmm. And I personally blame Oli for it because of his uh, poor man management in terms of how you keep people fit. You make sure that you aren't overplaying people. Even even if you don't have the strongest of squads, United is not a shit squad. Players like Donny van der Beek, players like Juan Marta, players like Daniel James can play an occasional Premier League game. But he has to play Harry Maguire in every single game. He has to play Bruno Fernandes in every single game. And that's what cost us the game against Liverpool. We lost against Liverpool because... My man, Oli Gunnar Solskjaer doesn't know how to man-manage. He doesn't know how to manage in-game. He doesn't. He just doesn't know it. Like, see, that, it just basically shows that he is bound to be a mid-table level manager. Never supposed, He's never going to reach the heights that Antonio Conte, Zidane, Carlo Ancelotti are so, like. You know, everyone has a ceiling, right? Like, you see Dan James. You see a Dan James player. Dan James is bound to be a bench player. That's what his legacy at United is going to be. Uh, and that's what Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's legacy as a manager is going to be. He is like he is not a top level manager. We have him here right now to create a strong foundation, but he's not going to win trophies with us. That's we need to accept that because he doesn't know how to win trophies. He's that kind of manager. It's just facts. Like I'm not pissed at him. I'm just saying this is reality, and you gotta accept it. He's terrible. I love to hear this. I think Ravi will love to hear this later as well. I'm definitely yeah. trying to do this because it seems like uh, Ravi will say that you got some sense. But <laughs> nevertheless, I mean, no, see, the thing uh, is, I, got... I agree. See, Oli right now is probably the right manager to have at United. But by saying that Oli is the right manager to have at United, we are kind of accepting the fact that, okay, we are fine with not winning a trophy for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. Right. Oli is the kind of manager who will help these young players develop. Fair enough. But that's about it. That's all he can do, right? He, I would love to have him like remain, uh, him remaining as like an attacking coach, like a forwards coach in the team after the, whoever the next manager is going to be. But now that he's got a United job, even if he leaves or he gets sacked, he's going to get a brilliant offer from somewhere else. And like, yeah, it's for, just, sure. for sure. He will be, sh- yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that's, I mean, that's my two cents on the situation. I mean, do you think, then United should replace Ole and go for like Conte right now. Like, I mean, they have there's like a winning manager, or do you think he's not suited for Man United? For example, I the thing is, like I said, right? I don't think Ole is the one who's going to win us trophies or bring us back to our glory, but I don't think we are ready for competing yet, right? Mm-hmm. I, I don't think United as a club has the players or mentality that's needed to win the Champions League or like. Like, sure, if I think if you bring in the right manager, the mentality can come with it. I, Chelsea is the brilliant example for that. You bring in a world-class manager in the form of Thom- Thomas Tuchel, everyone starts playing like a different... It just, the team transforms. Mm-hmm. But I feel like right now, if you bring in Conte, Conte is, again, kind of manager who doesn't stay at the club very long, right? Or at least, like, last couple of teams he's been with, he's not stayed at the club very long. Um, I I don't think that's a United way to go, you know? I feel like we need a manager who's willing to come and stay for a while, maybe four to five years, and not only take it as a project, but take it as a project along. Like, I don't want a Pochettino. Pochettino is a purely project manager. Yeah. Um, I want something like what Klopp and Pep Guardiola have done at City and Liverpool, right? Mm -hmm. 
the thing is honestly i don't see any manager out there in the market that necessarily like can just shoot walk in right now and make sure united are competing while making sure that united keep improving season in and season out maybe eric ten hag from ajax or the thing is i don't i'm not a big fan of antonio conte he will win us trophies but i feel like he is um, i think he's like the modern era jose mourinho if that makes sense right yeah like he's a great manager one of the greatest like he's going to go down in the history books blah 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 uh but i i not my like i don't think i don't see the united way in them you know like i i feel like united like right now the the club wants to stick to the culture and that's why they've kept oli for so long right uh they are depending more and more like on oh play the united's like culture type football bring in that ideology that united has always had uh and that's what oli tried to do at least if you bring in a conte or someone like a mourinho you are again abandoning that one path you've taken yeah. and trying in your so you should like i would i would prefer not winning a trophy for a year and then winning a like becoming dominant again and not for dominant becoming extremely competitive in a long period than winning a trophy just this next year and then again back to the same cycle yeah you know yeah i think yeah that's, that does make sense because conte will maybe give you a few trophies in the beginning but then it, He's not a long-term project, and it just exactly. Then it's just the same cycle. Then we'll again go into a rut, and then we'll also uh, like four, five years we won't win anything, and then we'll bring in the world-class manager for one year. And then I want, I want a project, you know. I want something that so three years down the line, United will be back to like a yeah. high, high enough level that we compete for four, five years straight, you know, not just one year. Yeah, yeah, I, I see. I definitely see your point. I just people are wanting contest. I, I thought it was definitely. I mean, Conte is yeah, in the right now, so. About Liverpool though, right? Salah and Mane, not Mane. Salah has been like linked with a, a move away for a while now. Uh, uh, what do you think about that? I mean, right now the the move away hasn't really materialized, but I think no matter what, we do need to refresh. I mean, but I don't think Mane. I, I don't think we need to give up Mane or Salah yet, unless there is some extraordinary deal. Like I don't know. A hundred mil from Real Madrid. Like for example, Mane Mane getting sold for a hundred thirty million, for example, something like that. Oh, that's, yeah, that's then you don't say no to that because you have some man, like some man is like that. Like if that happens, then I think I think they're getting older. You know, like they're right now they're heading to their, like twenty nine. I think they're heading to the thirty soon. So if we yeah. get such a deal for them, I think it would be worth selling. And you know, kind of we need to transition up. Clearly, we need to transition the squad a little bit because some players are aging clearly, and kind of refresh because you can't keep the same team for four years as as we we've, we've seen this year. Correct. So, and even that's what Man City have been doing. They've been refreshing their team a little bit because you can't 100%. keep the same team. Like right now, Man City Aguero is gone, and and now they have Ruben Diaz, so they're solid defensively. So stuff like stuff like that, like to refresh the team. A little bit, but yeah, uh, that's that's basically why I think. But I mean, overall this year we got top top four, so I'm pretty happy. But yeah, I want let's just I wanted to get back to the Man United Liverpool game. I mean, that I thought we were actually like we were. I mean, there are a lot of questions with our front three, as you just said. I mean, as you were alluding to, I mean, Salomani leaving, but I mean. I think we were, in that game we were we were superb though like I think maybe it was more of United being terrible but we I thought to play at Old Trafford the way we did was so good so yeah was, yeah I think Liverpool were the better team for the game um yeah. I think but wait did we get United got the first goal though right you guys took the lead yeah uh, yeah we don't know uh, here we go again I like I was done nah but. After that goal, so up till that goal, I would say it was quite competitive, right? Yeah. Both teams were, both teams seemed like they could go ahead, and United then did go ahead. But after that, it was all Liverpool, right? Yeah. I, I can't. I, I think it was all Liverpool after that. There was no. Yeah. I mean, um, Firmino came, was back scoring two goals against you guys. Uh, that's and, and bro, like the header, right? That Firmino scored. Like our defense 
uh, when there are like set pieces, like not only that Firmino goal, but even the Gerard Moreno goal against us in the Europa League final, the way, how easily, like, how easily do we concede goals and set pieces? Like this crosses, the, the free kicks that come in, right? The, you throw a ball at the back, our defenders just let people run. And that the way Pog, oh, that was just, oh, that was pain. Well, I have a stat for you, Yashish. Oh, Man United this? have conceded the highest proportion of their goals from corners, 9 out of 39, uh, of all sides in this season's Premier League. Why am I not surprised? Like, look at this. Like, I didn't even know that's a fact. Why am I not surprised? I had I, the stats prepared, you see? Had all the stats prepared. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. Why are we so terrible on set pieces? You know, like, the thing is, now here's where coaching comes into play, right? You see, um, I feel like the greatest of coaches, right? They know how to defend on set pieces. So set pieces and things are something that don't necessarily depend on your personnel. Like, Burnley is a clear example of that. Even though they don't have the best players in the on the planet, of course they don't have the best players on the planet. But on set pieces, they're really strong. Yeah. Same with Southampton, right? So if you have a team that is well drilled during practice, well coached to practice set pieces, even if you have terrible players, a good coach can make sure that you don't concede goals in set pieces, mm-hmm. right? And that's what I'm saying. I feel like when it comes to the back of the like when it comes to the front, right? Ollie is the best manager you can have. Not best, of course not, but you get my point. Like yeah. He's a great manager to have when it comes to attacking sense because we have been scoring a lot more. We have been creating a lot more. And our, even our fullbacks are starting to create more op- uh, opportunities. Mm-hmm. But at the back, we have not improved one bit. Like We have arguably regressed. You know, It's just like our defense is terrible. The goals that we conceded against y'all, even if we were not in the mood, we still shouldn't be conceding those goals. Like, Liverpool really took advantage of our terrible performance. Trent Alexander-Arnold was brilliant in that game. He was so good in that game. Just, yeah. wow. He, I think that stamped his, like, guaranteed, uh, ad, like, admission into the Euro squad. And which is unfortunate now that he's injured. Uh, yeah. he that he's good. But I think that's, like, that game. Because Gareth Southgate was watching that game, right? So, I think it pretty much guaranteed him a spot in the... Yeah, he was super, I mean, he's been superb for the past few games. Ever since he got admitted from the squad, he's oh, yeah. been performing so superb. I think the only game was bad, that was bad was the Real Madrid game, away game. But besides And that, even in that, I think that one mistake he made, that was the only like bad part. Otherwise, yeah. he was pretty funny. Well, Vinicius did give him a lot of trouble. We, we didn't really, weren't able to deal with him. But regardless, that already happened. So I'm moving on from that straight away. But I mean, United... I, United's defense, I mean, United conceded 27 home goals in the Premier League this season. Their most in a single campaign since 1970. We only only conceded 12 away from home. Mm -hmm. I mean, you guys were undefeated away from home. Yeah, bro, I don't get this team. Oh, my God. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, so United did just... Yeah, but I mean, I, I, another point, I, we already talked about United being embarrassing in defense, especially at home. I don't know what's with your home form, but uh, but regardless, I, the fourth goal we scored with Salah, I, you were asking a question, does Salah, could Salah leave? The passion he showed in that goal, like, he would, I, like Salah's passion when, when he scored that fourth goal was just such a sense of relief. And like it seemed like a player who is definitely going to stay, who a player who doesn't want to play in the Europa League, who wants to be in the Champions League. It didn't look like a player who wanted to leave the club. So oh, that's yeah, the I, thing I'll add to that. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. Okay. Um, but for that goal again, uh, Dean Henderson. Yeah, he was so small in that goal. It was. He looked. He looked like I. Like I. Like he like, yeah, he looked like your assistant if, goal. Exactly. If I was keeping that sort of, oh, 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 that was so terrible. He is like, ah, oh, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> but yeah, it's fine. The thing is, the, the English media is not going to pick up on this and criticize the hell out of it because it does not fit their agenda of Dean Henderson being great and David yeah. Day being great. Right? Yeah, but, but I was just, I didn't expect to win that game. I was so delighted. This is the club's first ever away win against Manchester United with the club. And it was a great win, but 
Uh, let's move on. This top four race, I mean, this is a huge win in top four race. I think Leicester, after Leicester beat May United at Old Trafford, they were like, we're done. There's no way we're not making a top four. And then this this game happened. A shock wave to Chelsea. A shock, after Chelsea beat Man City away from home, that's it. We're secured top four. No way. We're, we're There's no way we're not making top four. But then we beat Man United away from home. And that was a, a huge message for us, you know. And then we head to West Brom. Sam Allardyce, you know, the team who started this bad form for us because when we tied one West Brom 1-1 one, one at home. This is the start of our bad form. This is like the day after Boxing Day. I remember this game clearly. And, you know, uh, and it was a hard game for us. We were down 1-0. Then Salah scored a beauty goal. Then... I, I thought it was over last minute of the game. I'm like, here we go again. Another performance, same crap all the year. And then Allison scores. And that has to be the goal of the season. I was, that has to be the goal of the season. That, yeah, it has to. Like, going to head the ball like that is just unbelievable. I think they gave it to Lomella, to be honest, I think. I remember yeah, the goal. I mean, fair enough. The, that, fair yeah. enough. Well, like, a, a goalie to head the ball like that. In such a big game, and the goal is huge because look, like according to like the predictor models and stuff like that, Liverpool had after being after that goal, Liverpool have had a seventy one point five percent chance of finishing in the, finishing in the top four. Before the Allison's goal, the the chance was just forty four percent. Damn that! So that was like literally season defining. That was a season defining goal from a goalie. In the last yeah. minute of the game, has that ever happened before? I mean, I know yeah, like, yeah. equalized the game that happened before, and it was like people were going insane. But a game winner that secures as a top four. And, Crazy. No, that, like, that was. I mean, uh, Alex has been experiencing a tough few months with obviously not being able to go to Brazil due to COVID and his father died, drowning. And it's been a really tough few months for Alex. And you see that with his performances. But the fact he was able to score a goal like that, I mean, that's unbelievable. I, it, I'm just speechless. Yeah. yeah, and then the best part, did you see, I, I, I was, did you remember Sam Allardyce after that game? He was he was whining about, he was so salty about it. Like he was whining. I, <laughs> I mean, fair yeah. enough. You have no, you have no right to say that. You, you, how whiny is a uh, club when he loses? Well, yeah, it's, but it was funny to see. Basically. Yeah, of course it was funny. To see. You know, when you see a losing manager like that, and whining like that. But what's actually pretty interesting with the main United game and this game, Liverpool recovered ninety four points from losing positions in the Premier League under Jurgen Klopp, Mo the most of any team in the competition since October twenty fifteen. So like. You know, like how like we United basically were, were built off from Fergie of character coming back from one nil down to win the game. And I think Klopp really built that in this team. Yeah. I mean, talking about coming back, we had 31 points this season from losing positions. Yeah. This oh, yeah, season as well. So you guys are also getting that identity back. Yeah. But th- that that came back to bite us in the ass. Uh, <laughs> yes, it did. Yes, it did. But uh, now we, we can't. But the thing is, I would rather have the most points ever than the most points from winning loser, loser from losing positions ever, right? Because why do you want to concede a goal in the first place? Just don't concede a score. Like it's just that easy. It just <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's just uh, yeah. And another thing is that Allison. Uh, Allison, what was the score of Liverpool's 38th winning goal in the 90th minute of a Premier League game? 13 more oh, than any yeah, other exactly. team in the competition's history. So, we can score a lot of 90 minute goals. And, you know, that's, a, I, I guess we've been improving on that. Like, because that was Fergie's identity. Fergie's team. Yeah, it was. A, a last it was minute goal. And we're starting, they get a lot of those. This, like, that's how we won the Premier League. Or, yeah. Well, that's how we were fight. We won the Premier League, and that's how we started to compete for the Premier League in the two years. So it's good that we're we're still able to do that. Yeah, one hundred percent. And I think it's 
I think it's ob- obvious to say that Allison is the first goalkeeper to score a competitive goal for the club. So, and he's the first goal in Premier League history to score a header in the sure. uh, the six goals you scored. Like, it, like the goals you usually score in the Premier League, you know, like Tim Howard, uh, I forgot who, who else. Some other goal is like all I did was was kick the ball off from from a goal kick and it went in the back of the net, like it was a fluke thing. Like yeah. this is a, a magnificent header. Yeah, it was just it was just incredible, and and it just gave so much pressure to um to Chelsea and Leicester because they were playing each other. If you remember, uh, oh yeah, yeah. Leicester needed Leicester needed to win in order to secure top four. I think even the point could have been enough for Leicester. But no, oh, yeah, Chelsea point, would have been, point, would, point would have been more than enough for Leicester in that game. Yeah, but no, Chelsea just beat Leicester, um, and Chelsea looked really good in in, in their top four race. Now a, a, a huge win against a team like Leicester, and they would and this after they lost in that, in that FA Cup final, and Chelsea were superb. They were like they they uh, you know how Werner can't score goals if he probably could score goals they would have been up by more than two so but Werner well, missed like four chances in the UCL final like that's, they another, really need that's another thing as well but yeah really like a... yeah but yeah Chelsea huge win when this and then we beat Burnley three 0 so it was a comfortable win yeah Burnley game was easy yeah it was easy for us. Nat Phillips scored, which is a nice thing to see. In the, uh, Nat Phillips, Alice <laughs> scoring, that was just insane. Actually, you to be honest, with the West Brom goal, we scored the West Brom goal. I thought I literally thought Phillips scored, and then and then I see and then I see everyone hung Alice, and I was thinking, what the hell happened? Did he actually score this? Because you know, like Phillips and Allison were going for the header. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I thought Phillips, Phillips was going for first, every and header. I was like, what the hell happened? Wait, can I say Phillips goes for every header? For some reason, he's around every ball in the air. He's yeah. just he's just there every time. Yeah. No, but Phillips he's has been a really good center back for us this year. Like, I yeah, think- he's a very good aggressive player. Like in the air, he's very good. I would love to have him at United, like just simply because of his he's a backup. He's a good. Yeah, he's a good backup. Good backup. Yeah, I'd rather have him than Bai because of Bai's like far more extensive uh, injury and rashness and all of that stuff. Wait, can I? I can't believe I. For, I mean, it's been a long time, so I forgot about this. But for the main United game and for like the past few games, our center backs were Reese Williams and Nathaniel Phillips. Yeah. And the fact we were able to win all these games, like May United, that I mean, that was incredible. Like, and I think the credit needs to be given to Philip to Phillips and, Could I have a yeah. and Williams yeah. because those are those are the center backs who didn't even expect to be in the squad this year. Especially Reese Williams who was who who came in the team he, he was really poor a few months ago. He looked like he was out for sure and and he had to come because Kaba got injured. We're not putting Fabinho back in center back again because yeah. we need that spark in the midfield and the fact, and I had doubts for the Reese Williams, and he, he was, he, I mean, he wasn't great, but he performed, he survived. So, I mean, I mean, props to those two center what backs. You, what do you think of Ibrahim Kun, uh, Ibrahim Konate, Ibrahim Akanate? Oh yeah, and yeah, that having signing him will be huge as well because, I mean, I think we're between him and Kabak. I think Kabak didn't have enough pace, but Konate is real a solid center back. But yeah, I I mean there he had one long big injury. I think mean, like people are saying he had a bunch of injuries, but it was just one big injury, then a few small ones. But I think he'll be a good center back for us. At least I hope he, he was the captain of the French U21 team, and, and there's a reason for that. So hopefully he'll be yeah. a leader to our team. He's a young player, he could improve. So right, one of us. And we need center backs right now, especially. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, but I just wanted to talk about the center, our center backs. Like, and and then what was crazy about we were head, heading into the that Crystal Palace game. Reese Williams, according to Klopp, after the game, he was injured. He wasn't in training for the for uh, for a few days, and then he comes play against Crystal Palace, and we kept a clean sheet. Like I, I, yeah, I, 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 I Liverpool really clutched out. They really performed 
exceeded everyone's expectations by the end of the season. Yeah. So, I mean, with our center back pairing, we were not supposed to make top four. And then the, no, fact no, we got, no. the fact we got third place, like, did you see after the after the Man City Everton game, they told Gary Neville that Liverpool finished third and he couldn't believe it. Oh, yeah. And, he gave, not... and remember that everyone saying Liverpool are the worst champions ever. Now they can't say that anymore. Well, of course they can't. He finished third. Oh, my yeah. God. So, and Yas is just getting ready to laugh at me. You were getting ready, but it didn't happen. But yeah, of course. the final day was pretty insane, though. Like, everything was going on. Like, Leicester took the lead 1-0. Then we took the lead to make it 1-0. Mane, Mane actually turned up this game. I had a feeling like he could have turned up because he didn't, Mane hasn't turned up the whole year. So, surely, in, in the last, surely when we needed this turn up in this game, Mane was going to be the one who would do it. And he did. And it was just... Uh, a huge credit. Yeah, I was watching the Chelsea. I wasn't watching the Liverpool game for some reason. I didn't bother watching it because I thought y'all were gonna win anyway. Yeah. Uh, so I watched the Chelsea and Leicester game together. Uh, yeah. So that was a roller coaster. Yeah, Liverpool was a Liverpool was a comfortable one, but actually, uh, they could have been one nil down. We could. I mean, our defense is like it's. I'm praising it, but obviously, it's not the best defense. Of course, it's probably a championship defense. And we we not championship, them. not championship. I think like a mid table league. Okay, right? okay, nicer than me. But not nevertheless, yeah. like I, one of the, I, Townsend was through on goal and he and he missed somehow. And we were one 0 down against Crystal Palace. We could have lost the game easily, but and yeah, but then Palace, Crystal Palace, Crystal Palace they're such a bogey team to play against. Like you, Crystal Palace always pull off some weird, weird results, you know, like. A, <laughs> Yeah, like, was... Remember when they beat Man City 3 2, for example? They oh, yeah, beat, they beat yeah. Palace 4 3 a few years ago. Like, and they beat you guys 3 1 in the opening day. So they always have like, a, they always give like a shock out of nowhere, basically. Yeah, and I so it wasn't as easy of a game as what people are saying. But still, we had, to, we had to go and beat them, and we did. And it was a comfortable one. And yeah, we made top four. But we won our past five games. And I mean, we were like, we look, we were like 20 something point. No, we were not 20. We were, we were, we were very, yeah, I kind of exaggerated there, but we were like eighth, we were like where Everton were 10 in with 10 games to go. And then now Everton, oh, yeah, or, or like in, after, ten, like, Everton finished in 10th and we finished in third. Bro, Leicester really messed up. Rest yeah, up. And, and yeah, we were like 12 points behind Leicester. It's like with Man United, it was like, remember when Man United were in the same position as us? Yeah, the same thing happened. It's just incredible. But Chelsea almost bottled it. You said you watched this game, but uh, yeah, but what did you think of that game? I mean, not much to say. I feel like Chelsea were complacent. They came out thinking that oh, there's no way they lose, right? Or maybe they came out thinking that oh, Liverpool and Leicester are both behind us. Of course, one of them. <coughs> of course, of course, one of them gets knocked out. We are safe. And then they realized, oh shit, it's all a mess. Yeah. And then they started turning up the pace. But then by then, Aston Villa is not a weak team, right? Aston Villa is still a strong team to play against. Uh, so they like once you've conceded, you've messed up. It's very difficult to come back in the game against Aston Villa. So it was always going to be an uphill uphill battle for them. And considering the fact that like Werner is their striker, it was always going to be tough. Yeah, I mean Villa were one a hard team to play against. I mean now Grealish is back, so. It- Greel is being back, and now Villa are really at their best. And so it wasn't surprise. I mean, I, I guess it wasn't a surprise that Villa were able to turn up like that. Like, I think we, we should have expected something who, like who that. Who would you say? Who would you say is the best player in the league outside of the big six? Grealish, for sure. Grealish, right? Yeah. That no one, there's no like doubt. No, no I, there's no doubt. Grealish has, has to like, but like, like, even even players like Lingard. What bros? Okay, yeah, but Lingard only showed up at, at the second half of this year. Yeah, that's uh, that and Ward Prowse also first half strong, second half relegation form team. So I uh, Grealish, I mean when that when Grealish wasn't playing for Villa, Villa that's why Villa didn't make the Europa League. Basically, oh, yeah. Grealish wasn't there. That's why they couldn't make the conference league. But 
Yeah, I think Villa, I think, had a good year, and and they showed how good they are. They beat Chelsea. Chelsea actually had a lot of chances in this game, I think. I watched the highlights. Yeah, they, they had a few you know, Chelsea or Chelsea, they can't finish their chances. But yeah. And you can see the striker problems with the stat right here. Chelsea are the first side since Everton in 19, 1910, 1911, to finish in the top four of the English top flight, despite having no player reaching t- double figures in the, in the league that season. Their oh top goal scorer was Jorginho with seven goals. So, Wait, how many goals did they score? How many goals did they score? That's a good question. Let me check. I should have, I, it would have made sense to have that set prepared, but we'll get that stat. Let me look. Chelsea scored 57 goals this season. No, 58. They were 8. 58, yeah. They scored 58. That... <laughs> they scored less go- lesser goals than West Ham, Leeds, Liverpool. They scored the least amount of goals between the, the, oh. top, um, the top seven. Damn. Yeah, yeah. That's they, they, could, they only scored as many goals as Austin Villa and Grealish wasn't even playing. Exactly. Oh, That's my insane. God. That's insane. That's insane. Yeah, but I guess Chelsea were able to get results, you know, defensively. But look at the passes stats. Chelsea has the second most passes by a team. Yeah, and who's the first? Uh, City, of course. Mm. I just want to go Liverpool. City, Liverpool. And goals Chelsea. per match. You know where Chelsea are in goals per match? They're eight. They're eight. So, like, they're eight overall in, t- in total goals. I mean, they, they, they scored a little bit more goals than Arsenal. That's all I have to say. But the yeah. fact they made top four is such an like I mean they were, they and were, the Chelsea they, took five hundred and fifty six shots. That's the third highest by any team in the Premier League. Uh, but they have the eighth and the highest number of goals. But Chelsea there. were the second best defense in the league this year. So, oh yeah, I mean of course, right? Like, Actually, expect- Arsenal were the third best defensive team this year. Can you believe that? I mean, I can't. Arsenal played a very boring style of football with very defensive yeah. styles. So I, I'm not surprised, to be honest. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, uh, I think that's enough for the Premier League. Is well, I want, well, I want to reiterate how uh, Leicester bottled it one more time because and that was going against that was an insane game as well. Like You had Gareth Bell scoring and that also happened in the final day. And, and once, I think once last we scored the second goal, Leicester were like, were like four, three, two, it was two, two. I think it was over. And it was just so funny to see Leicester just yeah. bottle it. And they, and Chelsea really relied on Spurs to make the top four. Like, I'm not sure. Are Spurs, Spurs fans happy about this because they're playing in the, your, the conference league. And they yeah, I think they're happy. I think they're happy. Of, at least they're happy of the fact that like they finished ahead of Arsenal in Arsenal's worst ever season. Yeah, right? I mean, I they definitely were in. They were they were definitely indecisive if they wanted to win or not. Yeah, it's just so funny. <laughs> nah, if I was if I was a Spurs fan, I would have preferred winning that game and finishing ahead of Arsenal. Because yeah. if they would have lost, that would have meant they finished behind us. Well, so, it was it was funny either way. It was like a win-win, to be honest. For yeah. uh, for either it was either win for lose, lose. Like Spurs lose, are lose, taking lose. the L no matter what in this game. Yeah, Spurs are taking the L no matter what. That because is Spurs, you know, it's not a surprise. Like they took <laughs> yeah. the L on Conte, they took the L on on Pochettino. Yeah. Spurs okay. will always be Spurs. Did wait? Did you see Mourinho this bell? Mourinho is like Bale has not. Sh- Bale, I mean, Wales have good players like Bale, but they they have he, Bale hasn't showed up against the big teams. Oh my God! Nah. <laughs> you know, Bale was actually quite brilliant this season. Like, I think he was one of the he was that third best player. I suppose. Yeah, but he, play, he's like a luxury player. He played whenever he wanted to play. Oh yeah, he he played when it was his mood. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. I mean, for Spurs to pay that those wages, I think it was not good enough for Bale. So. Yeah, one hundred percent. They sold a lot of shirts, though. They sold a lot of money. Yeah, that's true. Uh, actually, I have another interesting stat overall. The whole of the whole Premier League. Uh, actually, let me and let me end with the Leicester stat to let make Leicester ended more days in the Premier League's top four than any other side in the this season and failed to finish inside the top four places. Exactly. Two hundred forty-two days 
I mean, Brandon Rogers for you. What did I say? That was my, that was my, that's what I said earlier. Yeah, that's yeah. what you said earlier, but there is the actual stat that. Exactly. I, that's mad. That's mad. It's genuinely unbelievable, to be honest. Yeah. Like, I just don't. Actually, you were talking about Bell. Actually, I actually have an interesting stat about Bell. Bell averaged a goal every 84 minutes in the Premier League this season. For players with 10 plus goals, only always at the wheel in, in 98, 99 has a better minutes per goal ratio this season in the competition. One, one, he, he had one per 71 minutes. That's actually unbelievable. So unbelievable. you were saying that Bell hasn't been bad this year, and I guess you have a yeah, point. Yeah, I really think he's been pretty decent. Um, but I think, is there anything else you want to make fun of? Well, I wanted, to, this is an interesting stat. Obviously, this is Premier League lockdown uh, season. It was a weird season. And you can see that with away wins versus home wins. And I mean, this is the first campaign this year where you see more away wins than home wins. And like there are nine more away wins than home wins this year. So it just shows how fan, no fans makes a huge difference in the Premier League. Yeah, it really does. I feel like United is a big contributor to that, though. <laughs> yeah, United. Yeah, United probably have a big. And Liverpool too. We lost six home games in a row. Exactly. 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 So, oh my god. And Sheffield as well. Sheffield lost a lot. Of, like Sheffield would have won a few home games this year, I think, if they had fans in the stadium. Oh, if they had fans, hundred percent, a few more. They would have still gotten relegated. They team. Maybe yeah, more. they could. They could have still got relegated, but I think they would have got a few more points this year, for sure. Right, right, one hundred percent. Yeah. Do you, what did you have anything else in the Premier League to say? Because I wanted to go through the Europe, iterate the Europe League final, Champions League final. Uh, so about the Champions League final, Champions oh, League yeah. final is a very Champions League final, right? So we, you said after the Premier League, we're talking about the Champions League final. Yeah, let's do that. Yes, and then then we can talk about the Euros, and I guess that's it. I mean, we yeah. talked about the Europe League final, didn't we? Or Ah uh, yeah, we yeah we talk uh, about yeah. It. You don't want to talk about the Europa League final anymore. You don't. No, you we, we, we so spoke Actually, let me let me talk. I listened to your podcast. Uh, clearly, I always listen, and I heard your prediction. So confident. I think what did France say four one? France said four one. I think. Uh, you said you said like two one. You you guys were confident basically. Especially if Fran was surprised because you, you Fran thought you would finish 10th this year. But uh, yeah, you guys were so confident, and then it just went totally wrong. And just all you guys just fell off the wheel. It was so funny to see. I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> you, someone doesn't know what to say. It, I mean, okay, so here's the thing. Like I said about in-game management, man management, player player health management, fitness levels, blah, 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 blah. Okay, Rashford clearly looked exhausted. Bruno clearly looked exhausted. Pogba started losing the ball. Even though, even though these are players that are considered game changers, right? You should realize as a manager that sometimes you don't keep all your game changers who are clearly exhausted, each and every one of them, on the field, and when you have players who could be potential game changers on your bench, yeah, was like put all the good players in the starting lineup, and he had no subs to make. No, but here's the thing, right? I don't think we had no subs to make. I think, given how Rashford was playing, and the fact that he did end up bringing Dan James back in the, into the team in the future anyway, he took off Pogba, who is arguably a far better player than uh, Dan James, and he brought in Dan James. You could have easily removed Rashford and brought in Dan James. Dan James would give you intensity. He would give you a uh, crossing ability. He would give you pace. He would give you some of the stuff that Rashford is not being able to give because I'm not saying Dan James is a better player than Rashford. Don't get me wrong. No, no, no. Dan James is not even close to the level of Rashford. But Rashford clearly wasn't fit, right? Rashford clearly wasn't up to pace. Like the, maybe five minutes at the end of the first half, he seemed like he was doing something. Otherwise, he was not. He just didn't look like himself the entire game. Right. Whereas Greenwood, on the other hand, was according to me our best forward. That includes Bruno and Pogba. And you take off Greenwood as your first player, and you bring in Fred. <laughs> Fred. Yeah. Like it's it just his and and you wait till the ninetieth or what eighty fifth minute to make that. Subs. No, you, you wait until extra time to make those subs. So yeah, my bad. He waited until extra time to make that. Subs. 
Like when I ever just... made all the subs already, you guys they couldn't even make a sub. It made no sense. Our team was oh, like see, fair enough. That starting eleven should be the one that should have started. Fair enough. Uh, but off the bench, you bring in Juan Mata, right? Let's say you're taking up Greenwood. Don't bring in Fred. Bring in Mata. Like bring in someone who's a seasoned veteran, someone who knows how to play, someone someone who knows like how to break apart defenses that are just sitting back. Someone who's a smart player. Someone who is well, Mata's. Okay, his argument is that Mata is not fit enough. Bro, any any footballer who is even half fit can play thirty minutes worth of football, yeah. man. And the like, thing, and you're saying he's not fit. The problem was the reason why he's not fit is because you're not even playing him. Like you play Bruno every single game. Mata got yeah, zero yeah. minutes this year. Like he played against Wolves. Even, and that was it. Even Maguire. Like if Maguire was there in our defense, I think like our defense would have probably been a little different. Different. Oh, of we course. Have yeah, played, that. Maybe that goals from the set piece. Would okay. Have no, no. I. You guys can see set pieces with Maguire as well. Yeah. See, I think we're still conceding it, but I'm just saying like. It, it's sure having Maguire could have made a better difference, and I pe- I feel like having Maguire is better than having uh, either of Bai or Lindelof, right? So I I just don't I the reason why Maguire got injured was because he was overplayed, right? Mm. He was extremely overplayed. I don't remember the last game he was dropped, like, like that's like that's how crazy I I think this entire like situation with uh, all these. Inability to man like manage players. I mean, fitness. don't forget Van de Beek as well. Yeah, like you buy a player for forty mil, and you don't give him a game in the Europa League final where you this guy has not to... just the Europa League final. You, you don't give him a game this year. You give him FA. No, no, no. So you, know, so you don't bring on. You bring on Fred, a guy who's a CDM. Uh, when you need to score a goal, when you have Donny Van de Beek, a guy who has scored Champions League semi-final goals. Right, this guy has scored Champions League semi-final goals. Yeah, and you don't bring him on. You bring in Fred when your team needs a goal. Mm-hmm. It makes no sense, right? Like, like how long do you need to give Fre- uh, Donny Van de Beek? Oh, he's still adjusting. He's still adjusting. How- you you don't take time to adjust in a place where you've already been. He has played in Europe. It's not like he's not played in Europe. I understand if you don't play him day in and day out in the Premier League. Fair enough, he has to adjust. But in Europe, he doesn't need to adjust. Mm-hmm. Right. It just it just so pissing off because that game I I was like okay when I saw the when I saw the starting lineups I had hope right when he conceded the goal I still had hope because that's how United plays this yeah game, yeah right? but when it was the seventy fifth minute and he didn't bring off anyone I was like this guy's done and Una Emery's already brought her fresh legs this guy is done I was just like the thing is still I I'm still fine with Oli staying here. But this game basically showed that Oli in a big game is not a good coach. He's going to always get outcoached by some like the better coaches. So he's not going to win those many trophies. Player, managers like Pep, Klopp, Tuchel. Uh, Maybe uh, Pep. He does beat Pep a lot. <laughs> yeah, but that's because I, I don't think we beat Pep in a UCL final. I don't think this team can win a UCL final. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like any of these top managers, like even uh, Zidane or Pochettino, I think United, Oli, the reason why United wouldn't win is because Oli is not at the, he's always going to get outcoached, you know. Maybe the players don't get outplayed, but he will get outcoached. I just genuinely have a, I believe that. I just do. Yeah. Well, I mean, the penalty shootout was kind of insane though. But, oh, uh, that was 10 11. I mean, okay, so here's the thing De Gea cannot be blamed for missing his penalty because I mean, he's a goalkeeper. Well, I mean, it's fine if he yeah. misses a penalty, big, big deal. But he let like 10 penalties in, yeah, fair like, enough. Well, I mean, the other goal he let in 10, 11, 10, land 10 as well. So, 10 as well, yeah. But, I mean, that's the other goalie. That other goalie is not, he's Villarreal's second choice goalkeeper. Well, yeah, I'm just saying it is. Listen, the thing is, I don't blame De Gea anyway. I don't blame De Gea anyway. I feel like he doesn't have a good penalty, penalty shootout record, record, but it's not like Ole is going to sub off. He's not, like not many coaches do sub off their goalies. I feel like it, the 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 gutsy move would have not the gutsy move. I would say the less like the the move he should have taken was bringing on Dean Anderson because Dean Anderson is a brilliant keeper when it comes. Yeah, but to now, how many how many managers do do that? Like except Van uh, Van Gaal maybe. And Sari tried to do that, and Sar- it just didn't happen for Sari. Yeah, no, I mean, like, I, I feel like I would have brought on Dean Henderson simply, like, for the penalties. Yeah. But it would have been a 
huge controversy if he takes the hair off yeah so right? you yeah. can't take the hair off so like like as a marketing issue as a pr issue as a blocker room dressing room issue confidence issue all of those problems all he made the right move fair enough i feel like the second is the penalty shootouts you can't blame anyone it's the penalty shootouts yeah you, you should not be in the penalty shootout that's the thing yeah exactly you shouldn't be in the, that spot in the first place like then it's any on games it doesn't matter which team is better on paper at that point it's just yeah. it's any on sure. at that point it just Putting who slips up. i mean did you see moreno <laughs> yeah did you see moreno after the game what do you do like you in the po- like in this instant live view it's like may i didn't sit down oh albert more oh yeah that guy i ho- i thought gerard more no. no yeah that ex liverpool <laughs> of course i had to bring that up well i think we covered the europe league final fully enough to torture you yash so let's go on I think you were more happy about this this Champions League. Yeah, final. I was. I was. I was quite Man happy. Man City to win this final, clearly. But I, I'll say I, I'll say I did predict one nil for the final. I did. I I was between the thing. The thing. No one said Chelsea would win, but the the thing is Chelsea are a solid team. I think. Uh, I think and Man City always will. Fi- I think Man City will always find a way to battle the Champions League. So. I was wrong for the past few. I thought they would be out in the quarterfinals and then the semifinals. I thought so. Eventually they were out. Eventually I got it right. I did get it right eventually. But I mean, I, I was between one nil Chelsea and two nil Chelsea because you know, like sometimes they get that second goal later on. But I I did do one nil because I don't trust Chelsea enough. And, yeah. And so and what happened? They won one nil. So I'm very happy. about that but what did you think of the game overall i mean so i mean my prediction was like it would be a very closed affair so i thought it would be a nil all or a one all and it would go to the penalty shootouts that's what i predicted yeah i, I heard that like- you actually you guys actually were more realistic in not saying the man city would would crush or dominate like oh yeah i didn't i think i'm like i'm saying I, uh, i listened to your preview Pre- you you guys previewing in the game like Fran and Arch, yeah, you guys yeah. weren't going like four one Man City, I think. Oh yeah, it was never gonna be that because see at the end, right? At the end, uh, City uh, Chelsea is actually pretty good like team. It's not it's it's reached the UCL finals even though it had an easy like knockout stage draw. You still have to be good enough to reach a UCL final. Uh, Spurs is an exception. We don't talk about that. Yeah. But uh I I think uh, when I saw okay so my prediction was that and I uh yeah, I saw the lineup. I predicted this before the lineup so Yeah, the second I saw the lineup the second I saw the lineup I was out with my cousins and my brother not my cousins my brother and my mm-hmm. uh family friends and we were all out of town and I see the lineup and I go like oh this is city is losing it. I literally said the second I saw the lineup that city is losing it, right? Mm-hmm. And well, I I was right. <laughs> uh, cause yeah, I I was right before the lineup. So oh, you were, yeah. I, I was mean, the only were, one who I was the only one who said Chelsea were going to win the game before I saw before the lineup before any of that. I think I was the only one because yeah, I, I'm, I'm, you guys said it would be a tight game, but Man City would win. Like yeah. and even Chelsea fans weren't confident heading into the game because they don't have a striker to score. None of the their players scored more than than seven goals. I must I must say that Kai Havertz really turned up that night. Yeah, he played a very mature uh mature game. Like I think he didn't he didn't let the occasion, the nerves, or his like season overall get to him. He played the night. He played the occasion. He was yeah, responsible he in the way he carried himself. I was really impressed by the way he played, and I think that's a very good sign for Chelsea fans for the next season because he's starting. If he if this is anything to go by. He settled into the team, and if he has settled into the team, it's gonna be a brilliant, brilliant next season by Kai. Yeah, Havertz. I thought he did play well. He scored a huge goal, and I thought he did. A lot. He, was, he was doing well on the, on the attack for Chelsea. But yeah. I wanted uh, let's let's talk about them. Um, you were you went you mentioned Pep's tactics. What what did I mean that Fernandinho not playing was just criminal, or even Rodri. They like played the most attacking team possible. It just see. There was more. It was more technical, but like it, it always seemed like Chelsea's plan to get in the, go in the counter attack was made 
they gave Chelsea a much easier job to do that. Exactly, exactly. Just the basically. reason why you put a the reason why you put a holding midfielder in a team why you use one holding midfielder in a team um, when you are an attacking team as a whole is uh, not just to provide a cover for the defense but to stop counter attacks specifically. Mm-hmm. And Fernandinho is a specialist in that, right? He's played in a City team that's always been one that attacks, right? And he's always had to play the role of a like a what do you, what do you call it a escape route specialist in terms of stopping counter attacks and um, breaking apart plays, right? So I believe that Chelsea went into the game, practiced more about the counter attacks, and figured out a way to get around the CDM. And this it was so much easier for them. Yeah, Chelsea City just Pep Guardiola just told them, oh, you don't need to worry about that. I'll leave that place empty, right? I think I, I'll tell you though, right? I think Pep's mind, like uh, thinking, like of course he's not stupid, right? He is one of the greatest managers of all time. So yeah. his thinking behind like choosing that lineup, he thought, right, that Chelsea sits so far back deep. The last two times he's played Chelsea, he hasn't been able to break them like down. Yeah, so it's always a pain to break them down. So if I put in more creative players, more technical, that would be an easy opportunity to uh, break them down. But he, I knew, I know for a fact he knew that there would be a risk in leaving the defense open. So I feel like he he did play his fullbacks a little deeper than he usually does. So the fullbacks in that game weren't playing as high up as they usually do in like the normal games I've seen. They were playing a little bit deeper, but that didn't work out at all. But you say Instead, that, but Kyle Walker was never like that left side for Chelsea. Like I was watching the game with my. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, out, that left was, side was always open. There was just like the because because. Because it was so well, like Mount and Chilwell were like playing those one twos so brilliantly that that Kyle Walker was always left stranded. Yeah, it was. Just, then, it was just. And then I would yeah. also say in the game, I obviously weren't doing the score, score, but like tactically, he tactically he was one of the main reasons why Man City lost this game. Oh yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. His pace gave them so much trouble, and I think. That pace did. I think he had a factor in, in Chelsea's goal as well because when you have that pace coming from behind, you have to mark him. Like, and he's been causing so much trouble. So I think. Ta- I mean, yeah. obviously, he should have scored those chances clearly. But like yeah. tactically, he's a good. Like, he's a good player to have tactically. All right, one hundred percent. I think he would be a really good. So let's say you play a system with like two strikers. Let's say a Lukaku and Timo Werner system, right? Yeah. In that system, Timo Werner would be a brilliant player to have. I just don't think that he's the right focal point. You know, I don't yeah, think he could be like yeah. one player up top. Like in a four-three-three, I think he's not the best. I mean, but if Havertz, you play played like a, in the, Havertz played in the, in the number in the false. Exactly. I think this game Howard's played the shadow striker role, which he used to play at Bayer Leverkusen as well. And because he was playing that shadow striker, he ended up getting more opportunities and he was getting into good positions. And Timo Werner, like you know, like then Timo Werner's ran like like despite like if you ignore his finishing, I think he's been very good this season. Yeah, I think right. I agree. He, his, even with the assists, he's been quite good. He's been generous towards his teammate. He has been making. He's been very tireless. Like he doesn't stop running. He will give it his all. He's always uh, trying to get into positions, good position. He finds himself in good positions as well. Like he misses so many chances because he gets so many chances. And to get so many chances, you need to make sure you're in the right place at the right time. Yeah. And he's good at that as well. I, um, I mean, I'll be but, honest. I thought, I thought. I mean, when it was one 0 I thought when they subbed off Warner, I forgot who they put on. I think they put on Pulisic. Pulisic, thought, Pulisic. Take off Warner was a big mistake. I thought. I thought like because that pace. I think. I think Chelsea were. Oh like, yeah, but no, but they made the right decision in bringing Pulisic, right? Yeah, Pulisic, Pulisic was right. But as 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 now, not little... really, not really Pulisic, not really a Warner because I thought Warner was the instrumental role for like that counter attack, and I think Chelsea lost. Oh right, right, no, no, one hundred percent. But Pulisic still like when he came on, I think he was really quick considering because I think the other defense was slow around him because they were tired. Right, so even though he's not as fast as Timo Werner, I think because he had fresh legs, he seemed to do the job very well. Right, yeah. so I think he did a good enough job. He yeah. also had a really good chance at the end where he, he missed scored, the goal. Yeah, he should have scored that. But I don't know. I thought he was okay. Like he did get that pace, as you said. But I thought his, his hold up play wasn't good enough. I thought. Oh yeah, like, but, yeah, that's true. where like Mason Mount was able to hold up the play well. At Pulisic, Pulisic was just running forward, and like when you're when you're defending the whole time, you sometimes need to hold the ball a little bit. And hold, so that's, that's, the that's, other thing really that's my criticism of Pulisic. But 
overall, overall, yeah. I mean, Chelsea just defended really well. Uh, Rudiger was just amazing. Conte was in, was was incredible, and Rhys James, like the whole, their defense, Chelsea's defense was incredible. That's there's yeah, a reason yeah. Man City couldn't get a shot on target for a long time. And that was because of the those last ditch tackles. Oh yeah! Oh, that Antonio Rudiger tackle uh, block on uh, Phil Foden in the oh, was, earlier. Oh, was Foden! Oh yeah, it was Foden. Remember? Oh, that was brilliant. And yeah, I think like uh, and even start, Sterling didn't even start for a while, and he, he plays in the Champions League final. Oh, Just, it made no sense. That was one of the, that is that makes no sense to me. Now I could understand now not playing a CDM. I could understand everything else except of the selection of Raheem Sterling. That selection made zero sense to me. It it was just I don't know what to say. Like, like why would you play the one player that's been in terrible form when you have an entire world class bench, mm. right? You have some world class players. Why would you play the player that's not in form? Like it's just no. That was a terrible. That was that's another mistake he made because these James, these James absolutely dominated. Sterling, yeah. Sterling, like Sterling was, these James turned into Aaron Ambasaka. Like, <laughs> and Rich James was incredible in the game, and yeah. I mean, you couldn't take him off the England squad when he performs like that. Like, and, oh yeah, I think he's gonna, I think he's gonna start for England. Mm. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he does. Yeah. Um, so but let's yeah, see. So, but the right back spot for England is oh. I think Walker or Reece James, both of them are going to keep playing in the right centre back role because I do believe that uh, Gareth Southgate wants to play three at the back and not two at the four at the back. So let's see. Well, I actually have a stat of big uh, and this on Edward Mendy. Edward um, Mendy has kept nine clean sheets in in eleven Champions League games this season. That's and amazing. no no goalkeeper has ever kept nine in their debut campaign in the competition before. Wow! There he, there he has done it. He, I think Chelsea this term also conceded the least amount of goals. They conceded four, uh, right? Exactly. No, they conceded no, no, four. No, they didn't concede four. I don't know the number, but they conceded the least amount of goals ever in the Champions League's history. That's insane. Maybe. Like now they they're the first team. Like, and this, I mean, you, don't forget this has to do with Lampard as well. In the beginning, yeah. So. Uh, like they, I, they didn't concede even one goal during, throughout the. They only conceded one goal throughout the knockout stages. I know that. I think like they against, conceded, no, they conceded two. I think. The one against yeah. uh, Real and the other one. Oh, sorry, no, three. Oh, yeah, that, no, yeah, they probably conceded the four then. I think I saw a stat they conceded. Yeah, I know they conceded three against Sevilla, right? There was a three-all game against Sevilla. No, I didn't have a three-all. No, they didn't have a three-all. They won four-nil against Sevilla, and I think. Oh, they yeah, the, the Giroud class. Like, Oh yeah, they, I remember they conceded one. They conceded one to Sevilla. They conceded one against Krasnodar. Then they conceded one against Porto and one against Real Madrid. Those were the four. That's that's unreal. That's mm-hmm. genuinely unreal. Oh my god. Let me actually clarify. Let me make sure I got that right. I think I did get that right. I mean, but yeah. Anyways, I, so that's the that's it's it's actually like crazy that that like. Uh, uh wait, actually. I would say at the end of it all, Chelsea completely deserved it because oh, they sure. turned up. They turned up. They turned up on every single game. Like there was not even one game I would say they got lucky in during the knockout stages as well. I would say they were the better team in every single game they played. And oh, sorry, uh, no, I, I'm wrong. They conceded the goal to Rennes, not Sevilla. They tied oh, okay. Sevilla nil nil at home. Oh, okay. See, I mean that's that's impressive. I'm. It's actually crazy. Like yeah. So I was right, except Sevilla, they didn't concede against Sevilla. And Sevilla are a good team as well, by the way. And they beat them four. Right. I mean, Chelsea uh, really Chelsea deserved the Champions League for sure. Yeah, uh, yeah. They they there was not one like night they didn't turn up on. So I, I that's all you need to do. And I think they only fell behind for like one minute or something. Yeah. For like one minute, like they conceded against Porto in the last minute, and then they were losing against they were losing against Krasnodar, I think, for four minutes. So they only they were only behind five for five minutes. Yeah. So that's insane. Uh, but yeah, I think we uh, overall. I mean, I I think I'm happy about I, I'm happy to see Man City not win the Champions League yet. So that's a good. Right, well, 
I mean, Chelsea are, are catching up. I mean, but we have like six Champions League titles. So I'm not worried about Chelsea at the moment. Maybe you are, but I'm not. No, not really. Not, not really. Uh, yeah. I, I, uh, always the thing is, I'm not really worried because you always have the Premier League card, right? You always have 20 Premier Leagues as a United fan. So, like, even if the, the dude like goes, Oh, we have more Champions League than you, I'll go, like, Bro, we've dominated you in the Premier League forever. Mm-hmm. Second, you have 20 Premier Leagues, talk to me. Yeah, yeah, then you can say something, but yeah, I think Chelsea are the biggest team in London now. Oh, I mean. <laughs> Of course. There's They're no the doubt. only team who won the Champions League in London. They're not once, but twice. Oh, my God. Yeah, and they won the Europa League as well, which Arsenal and Spurs couldn't do. Yeah. It's a nice day to be an Arsenal fan, for sure. Oh, it's a brilliant day. Uh, a brilliant and we love to see. No Europe for Arsenal. And yeah, oh, and then your neighbors are winning the Europe. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, how much do you want? Do you want to preview the Euros a little bit? or? Oh, no, bro. That'll take long. That'll take, like, Oh, who do you think? Who do you think will actually win overall? France. Like I don't think there's like there is any competition. Yeah, I think France will win as well. I mean, but I wouldn't be surprised if France don't win. But I think France are clear favorites. favorites yeah, I mean, win. Portugal are a decent team now. I would say England. I don't think England have the home advantage, so it'll be interesting to see. But I mean, then. But you see, the United thing is England. If they finish top of their group, they're facing either France, Germany, or Portugal in the last. Yeah, that, that's insane. Yeah. That they, they, they there is no way they're draw. beating anyone other than maybe Germany. Like it's just England is out. I don't think England's going uh are going beyond the third round of sixteen. So yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think that yeah, I think that is it. I mean, we did cover everything mostly. Even I mean, yeah, I mean in the summer obviously we have the Euro, so it'll be interesting to see how the Liverpool players does. Unfortunately, Trent couldn't play because he he fought so hard to get in the team and then just to get injured. Yeah. Like that, it's just so unfortunate for him. But we have yeah, the player. I think we have, I mean, I'm not sure. Copa America may not happen. So, I mean, Brazil don't want to play Copa America due to the whole Brazil COVID thing. Brazil COVID situation. Yeah. yeah. So, like, Firmino, Allison, uh, who's the other player? And Fabinho. Fabinho. So, those three players probably will not play internationally. Uh, but... I mean, I don't think there's African Cup of Nations, so Mane Salah will not be playing. But we have, in the Euros, we have Jota. Let me see if I can get all the players. Jota, Thiago. Mm, who else? Jota, Thiago, Salah. Oh, no. What am I saying? Salah. He's not in the Europe. I am might not know, but he's not play, playing for Liverpool next year. Uh, I can't. This hot. Andrew Robertson. Robertson. Uh, Trent said whatever Henderson. So we have a, we, we do have a lot of players. Origi. So I I can't name everyone, but we do have a lot of players in the Euro. So it'll be hopefully we not even them Shikiri, get injured and even hopefully they'll play well. Even what? Shikiri, even Jordan Shakiri will be. Oh, Shakiri as well. Even though he may leave, but yeah, it's gonna be interesting. I, so. We'll see. And then obviously we had transfers and stuff like that. Are United getting close to guest chance show yet or same old crap? No comment. No comment. Well, yeah, it's United. So, yeah. So it's, it's an exciting summer. Hopefully, I hope maybe we'll merge like the soccer, in, the soccer universe. Maybe I'll do more content with you guys. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Yes. It's nice to, nice to see you. Nice to have an episode for the first time in the month. I think we really, been yeah. slacking, to be honest, but uh, but yeah, since you've not been slacking in the soccer universe, how? Uh, how like you? A little bit, a little bit. We have a little been bit. Well, a little bit. obviously, make sure you watch Yasis' con- content in the soccer universe, and it, it's, there could be Euros. It's gonna be a lot of a lot of football going on. May Copa America as well. So a lot of action. That they that they that we, we need to cover, even though football is over, there's still a lot to cover, and yeah, and yeah, so make sure you tune into that. But yeah, thank you for watching this episode. Clearly, this year it's been a very turbulent season with whole COVID and stuff like that. When you started this, we were top of the league, then we yeah. fell, then we finished third. I would say a decent season for us. 
Yeah, but given everything, there's a decent season for them. Decent season. Uh, hopefully next year we could win the league. Hopefully make some good signings. You wish. And you wish. Uh, yeah, we'll maybe we will maybe in this in this um, podcast we will do some um, content. We'll do some content on the Euros as well to talk about how Liverpool players are doing stuff like that. But yeah, we'll see you all next time. Thank you, Yasis, for joining this episode. And we'll My see pleasure. you all later.